Uh, do I have any of that wrong? Those are my key assumptions. <clears throat> okay. So when to right. commune with the Rathun. All right. So. To beseech the leech. <laughs> uh, I think everybody could make a. So, well, I'll, you know. Uh, I think we already rolled. I could be wrong, but I think we already rolled for um, traveling, too. I think we already did that. I'm going to say we did. So, how do you get back? It's it's over here, on the other end of the rookery, in an abandoned dock. How do you um, how do you get back there? Do you use the boat that you had, uh, or do you use um, uh, or do you walk through town, through the rookery, <clears throat> or how do you get back there? You also have a boat that you took from uh, the Aine Norne estate. Yeah, we have a boat. Yeah, we had the boat. But I feel like they'd be looking for a boat because they had the boat as their main escape thing. And we stole it from them. Ah, uh, that's true. There might be heat on this boat. Yeah. What about that... Uh... Yeah, the creepy lady that that brought us around on the boat last time. Well, before we escape the heat boat, is there anyone I don't like who owns coastal property? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh yeah. All right, let's park this boat <laughs> on someone else's land, and and then go find the creepy lady. So the fun thing is that <clears throat> the Ine Norne estate is in this canal uh, in the Sky Hollow Towers. And then it kind of goes into like irrigation for sewage and stuff, um, and runoff. Some of which is is goes off into the the Starfaith Meadows, and some of it's runoff from the higher terrain and the towers down into the Hoffenmoor, um, down into the port of the sea. Uh, so you could park the boat at any of the places along the canal, and. Uh, drag it up to somewhere near on the towers and then make your way down to Hoffenmoor to your other boat or you could try to put it somewhere in Hoffenmoor and I can give you a list of suspects um, um, I'm trying to think uh, one person if you don't like uh, what's his name <clears throat> Franz Ofen. Um, He's could, my gossip guy. It's your gossip guy. Oh, absolutely, I need him. So don't let's not screw him over. Um, He's another, my best friend enemy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, we just like trade gossip in an attempt to one up each other. I can pr actually I can present a few options, but does it, is there anything coming to mind that anybody would want? Uh, and then I also. Well, yeah, do you all have any ideas before I start coming up with some various options in the world? I would more in, I would enjoy your all's ideas more. I don't I don't know that we've met an enormous number of people. Okay. No, there were those there were those two people that I met in the game with the elf friend who's now dead. Who I may have done some heresy in the proximity of. I might not mind those people getting disappeared. I can't remember that. I can, yeah. When whenever I rolled up to to whatever his name was, I don't know. He's dead. It's not important now. Life. But uh, the, yeah, Lath. There were two other nobles there, and I was like, you know what's interesting heresy and they were like we're going to leave now <laughs> ah yes. and i got that's how i got Lath alone but also like if they were to get burned at the stake it wouldn't inconvenience me <laughs> you could do that um i'll give you a chaos dice uh die to roll for that you're probably going to get one if you try to implicate someone with a, a murder boat anyway so uh yeah that's that's an option any other ideas Do you want to try to implicate these people so that you can shift the heat over onto someone else that conveniently might be mentioning your name 
to the uh... Alphazar and Lua Pilda. That's who they are. Okay. Um, I think that you could probably do that. You could uh, you could you could bring the boat over. Um, it's probably a situation where you would, and this makes it look even worse. I think you'd probably need to bring it out of the water and onto dry land a whole block, uh, which you can do. It's, it's, and that makes don't it mind look us even, that just boating over land looks even worse. Uh, I think if like a boat is like literally taken off of the water and like d- dragged up somewhere, and then you try to hide it. Uh, I feel like there's a check for that. Um, you can roll a chaos die to see what happens as far as your alignment. And then that would be like a skullduggery check to see if you can get the boat to act as a ploy. Or guile. It's all probably the same. Let's see what i got around here. Uh, you guys should yeah. have a bunch of skill points. You, you all have been adding the skill points, right? How many skill points did we get from last session? One. You always get a skill point. All right. Well, let's. What were those skill options you gave me? Skullduggery and something else? Uh, Skullduggery and Guile. Ooh. I think that they kind of represent different things. And then. That's that's my roll for that, which looks like a success. And then what's a Chaos Dice instruct me? You roll a d6, and that's how many uh, chaos points you move in the direction uh, of chaos Only ranks. one, unfortunately. All right. Yeah, you gain one chaos rank. And then... Uh, All right. Uh, yeah, that passes. Uh, so I think what happens is you basically set this up to be very poorly disguised at this person's estate. Uh, like maybe some people that aren't in the business of usually doing this. And... Um, but it would it will draw attention like most certainly i'm going to mark that down without going back in my notes uh what did you say their names were i can go back in my notes to the when we went there but they are i have that somewhere balthazar and lua pilda Cool. You can uh, you can expect that probably you've caused at least a distraction for a while. Um, in some ways, it may actually bring attention to Max von Spee, um, but it probably was going to happen anyway with what was going on. So this may actually help. Um, so, anyways, uh, now what do you do? Do you do you travel over through the city, or do you travel by by boat from Hoffenmore? What do you think, uh, Roar? Oh, you weren't here for the first session. They yeah, uh, they made a pact with a dark elder entity uh, from the Don't beyond. Don't need to spoil it. Well, I think you told them, didn't you? Am I crazy? Yeah, yeah I um, think last session you talked about this thing. And, uh, yeah, so the person that they did it with that like was able to access this being promptly died thereafter. Um, but what, they went to the edge of the city to an old abandoned uh, port con- construction that has fallen apart and been abandoned uh, to, uh, to meet with this thing. So um, the question is, how do you get there? could take crazy boat lady or we could you know, there's our cat quota being met uh, yeah. or we could stick to land as the they're looking for boats I think the land might be better alright uh, so you'll need to travel uh, across two districts so I will be making uh, two die rolls you'll get there late into the night um so let's see here. Uh, Julianos is in uh, plain clothes and uh, a cloak, trying, ooh, try, ow, trying to look uh, inconspicuous without looking too inconspicuous. 
um, even in the night, uh, you see, actually, let me, okay, it's about in the middle. Okay. All right. Um, so you travel through the streets. You notice. You notice as you as you uh, as you make your way through the streets at night that there are fewer holy guard. Um, you don't even hear the sound of patrols or see their lights as often. Um, and the good news is it makes you makes it much easier to travel without being stopped and asked questions while you're out so late at night. But uh, um, also this is like, why? And where are they? Um, and you make it back to the old bridge where you can see the, uh, the altar to the God Emperor. And uh, you can see uh, across the square where you made it out of the burning house, the, the area where it's burned down. And um, as you come up to the bridge, um, there is a commotion. And uh, you hear screaming and lights and torches in the, in the night. As there's something going on on the bridge. Can I make an eavesdrop to see if I can kind of get an idea of what's going on before we uh, encounter that? Sure. Awesome. Okay. Oops. Wow, oh, my bad. Sorry. Wait, no, is that? But one D one hundred. That was my one D zero zero. Oh no! Oh yeah, no! A... Oh, what do I need for that? I need a just in case perception five six seven. Nope. <laughs> yeah, and it's also a critical failure. Oh no! Yeah, uh, because the the digits match. Um, I've never met this man before in my life. <laughs> you um. <clears throat> you you come up on uh, to, to the bridge and uh, you do see what's going on though uh, there are all sorts of people screaming and uh, some people running and yelling and you see uh, torches and um, uh, there are holy guard here uh, a number of them and there is this uh, giant mass of flesh sitting at the center of the bridge that would allow you to cross the canal over into the Dawnwater Rookery. Or actually, into the, uh, um, uh, to, uh, Handlerin, actually. The Merchant Quarter. And, uh, this thing of flesh, uh, when you look at it as in the torchlight, uh, is actually just like a being. Like a huge, um, person. Except, the sort of like globular chewing gum like shape of like just flesh and it's massive and it's just sitting there and it's got these beady little eyes uh, compared to its massive fat head and uh, drool falling out of its mouth and it looks down as the holy guard are stabbing the thing and striking it and trying to set it aflame and it just sits and groans and none of it is hurting it uh, but then the holy God guard turn and see you and they say, hey, you there, what are you doing here? I heard a commotion. I had to see what it was. Get out of here now, citizen. Go home. You shouldn't be out this late. Of course. Forgive me. Hey. Scurry. All right. You go back, uh, yeah, to everybody else. Yeah, I tell them what's going on. <laughs> I think we'll have to find another way.
Yeah, we need to find a way around. I hate that when this happens. This the third time this month I've been blocked by giant flesh mo masses in the road. Ugh. You'd think it'd be a more rare thing. In order I to had make a silver every time this happened, I'd have three silver, which isn't a lot, but it's surprising it's happened this much. I can't help but feel this may be somewhat our fault. No. No, we haven't been, like, cultivating flesh. I'm sure this was someone else's fault. Um, the canal here, um, there's a couple of options. One option is to travel all the way down to Hoffenport, Hoffenmore and then travel south along the uh, the port uh, to the edge of Hoffenmore to make it to the Donwater Rookery along the docks. Um, it would mean going a lot farther in an additional die roll for something that could happen. Um, and you could also get caught. Um, uh, the other option would be to try to make it across the canal but there's a chance, um, well, it would be going through sewage, and you don't know what's down there. Well, obviously we shouldn't go through sewage. That's disgusting. Capture or infection? Probably a less attractive option would be to track north back to the Sky Hollow Tower south of the, the fortress. Fortress is the main headquarters of the uh, of the Holy Guard, and then try to make it across there where the other main bridge is. Mm -hmm. Big south to the ports our best best option. All right, um, I will roll some die dice here. Interesting that nothing happens and we arrive safely. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, uh, oh, and then the other thing is that if you don't want to be caught, you'll need to make a easy um, <clears throat> stealth check or skullduggery or survival to try not to be seen. And as you go, you hear the sounds of growling and moaning and screams echoing off in the distance. Oof, it's getting bad out there. Oof, just another night in Damarung. I love the sounds of the city. I think survival is my best, best bet. I need a 59... And everybody will make this check. Uh, oh, there we go. <clears throat> All right, let's do a little skull digging. Unsuccessfully. It's up to you. Um, actually, I'll describe what, what you see and what happens first. Um... You are uh, you you're traveling through the alleyways, uh, skirting the edge of this uh, the canal and heading back to Hoffenmore to try to make it to the bridge, um, uh, to the west of where the dead drop was in the plaza, and um, and where you left the boat and where the cafe was where they made fun of the little gnome friend of yours, and um, as you're as you're traveling through the alleyways. Uh, you are kind of forced into a small plaza uh, to keep going, and uh, in the in there uh, on on the far end of the plaza, there's a cart, um, and uh, it's been partially charred, and smoke is rising from it, and you can see burned corpses and a dead horse on its side, and uh, you can see the cart has turned over. And there are all sorts of um, little dolls and effigies 
of uh, of the gods. They're like religious um, uh, religious goods, um, and uh, and there are a group of holy guard here, and I'm gonna see if they notice you. All you need to do, uh, Mac, uh, actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, yeah, because Max von Spee rolled the worst. So, all you have to do, Maximilian, is not roll a 95 or higher. And, yeah, and uh, on a, um, for your bonus for that, it would be uh, stealth. This is a contested roll. All you have to do is not gather, gain their attention. They were the ones trying to make the check. A group of Holy Guard are around this wagon right. there. Nice. Almost failed. That. Oh boy. That's really close. Yeah. Um, what is it like? You step out like into the plaza, or are you just like talking as you are walking? What do you do to make a bunch of noise that would have like gathered the attention, Max, of these guards? Yeah, something. probably just a little, little talking, and then just sort of not noticing what's what's going on. And then I imagine I see the guards, and just like deer in headlights, freeze for several seconds, and then look around a little bit and dart off to the side. Yeah, you dart off to the side just as uh, one of the guards like says, "It's you know, like do, do you hear, do you hear something, brother?" And then the other one is like, "We don't have time. We have to do this quickly." And uh, you notice they're stabbing the dead bodies with halberds. What do you all do? They don't notice you. Probably best to wait it out until they, uh, they go. Yeah, hide. Oh, that's not what I wanted. I'll still use that. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, you you wait uh, as soon as Max like. Uh, sees him and then like freezes and then dodges back into the alley. You all see this. You wait in the darkness um, as they uh, they stab these bodies and then they um, they put it uh, on the cart uh, with the horse's body and then they set it ablaze and then uh, eventually they uh, they walk away and this thing is just like torched in this plaza. Does uh, Giuliano know if that's kind of a normal thing that you have to do, or is this way out of the ordinary? This is way out of the ordinary. This is not normal. The other thing that's really odd is this place is very vacant. Um, like, when the Holy Guard come in, they start burning something. It's not common to come out and be like, hey, what are you, why are you burning that? But, like, you can tell this place is, like, real quiet. Okay, that's alarming. What do we do? The guards have moved on. And then this, you're just in this plaza now with this thing burning. Yeah, I guess we can just kind of carry on our way. Yeah, continue to our destination. All right. Um, we got one more uh, district to go to through. You can make a uh, another um, stealth. And you can pick stealth. Skullduggery or survival. Just changes how you do it, in my opinion. And then I'll roll for the event. What about disguise? How would you use disguise? Uh, I imagine I'm not looking like normal, so I'm kind of, uh, you know, normally I'm, I got kind of a noble thing going on. Max looks a little weird. But we got like heist kit and everything, so I'd, I'd like to imagine I look kind of, uh, kind of a little more lower class, more kind of like the kind of person you'd expect to see around here, a little less noticeable. 
Um, yeah, I think uh, not only can you do that, but you're probably able to help everyone else do that if you pass. Well, I don't. This is not a great day for me in rolling. Yep, you make a bunch of noise again. Um, I'm going to see if you're noticed. I'll just see if they pass first. That's how I've been doing it anyway. Uh, and then finally... Um, I will say... Let's see, you got a 12. What did you get? Uh, let's see, you got a... Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> Roar, was that a 66? Yeah, that's a crit fail. Oh, that's real bad. Okay. Do we do we need to use some tokens very early in the game? <laughs> yeah, it's up to you all. Um, but uh, sure enough, uh, like I think you are fussing over this, like the approach to take. Basically, you all have different approaches you want to take. Uh, probably Julianus is telling you that you you can't you need to move fast and you need to be quiet. Roar is like I can I can I've done this before. I can get through here. We if 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 we could have just taken the canal, we probably would have been fine. And then. Max von Speed's like, no, I can. We, we'll be fine. We just need to would really complete your look. Yeah, exactly. Like to everybody, and then this noise and commotion and stuff has drawn the attention of uh, a uh, a group of guards. Who uh, what, the next thing you hear is a woman screaming, like, "My child, my child, please! They're missing, please!" And a group of guards come out, and they um, uh, they flash blades on her, like you know. Um, uh, the two-handed swords and the two-handed weapons like halberds and, and um, falchions and stuff like that and they uh, they come over but then they, they hear all your noise and uh, they it, you now have their attention it's up to you you can talk to them or use one whichever one Uh, Try to charm them. Maybe I'll use a... I should say, one token will suffice for the whole group. The bad part of a token, as as you know, is that it become, then it becomes a misfortune token. And I can make you fail something. Well, maybe a, a token would be good here. All right. Um, you're making noise, and then and this uh, these guards they start to head your way, but the woman actually grabs hold of their robes and pulls the robes off of one, spins a holy guard around in hysteria, and it pulls the robes off, and she can see his face, and she just starts screaming at the top of her lungs as soon as she sees his face. And they all start, start stabbing her, and, and they kill her in front of you. And you see the, the Holy Guard put his robes back on, and they take the body, and they start dragging it off somewhere. Do we get a glimpse at, at him before he puts his robes back on? Uh, no. All right. Well, Maybe lady. he scrutinizes? Um, then I might have to make a resolve if it's that horrible. All right, may maybe not. I'll. Uh, <laughs> I'll rest that, my life speaking there. of resolve, though, <laughs> I mean, it's too, you've seen. Uh, I, I'd say you guys got to make a couple of resolve checks because of what you've seen. I just a little murder between friends. You see, mental peril. Reduce your peril. I've never figured out the peril thing yet. So the way I do peril is I use a, a use a chaos die or a fury die, and then I use the digit from uh, the 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 thing that is horrifying, uh, and that is to see if I can overcome the peril threshold. So resolve pass pass, and then what did you get, Julianus? Uh, I've got uh, I've gotten difference on here with the. Uh... Julianos, like I'm still gonna roll it, but 
My thought uh, is indifference. the indifference thing is for when like there's an eldritch horror, like something that should okay. bother someone, but you know, right? Like, so you would still be. Oh, and that's a critical success. Do you have any peril ratings currently? Uh, no. All right. <clears throat> you're doing pretty good so far. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'll just count that for for both of those, anyways. Um, and so you all are able to, to deal with this site. But that being said, the Holy Guard, they move on. They drag this body off. What do you do? Uh, you are uh, in the Dawnwater Rookery. Uh, if you continue, uh, there's a bridge here. <clears throat> I uh, gestured everybody, like, can I be quiet? And then I make the little running man. On uh, my my with my fingers, and I point to the bridge. All right, um, you all uh, you make it <clears throat> to the edge of the rookery. You hear you hear noises <clears throat> echoing oh, no. in, in the darkness, but um, but the other thing that you notice about the rookery is a place where sometimes, even when places should either be working. Because uh, it's a tradition to work even when it's dark. Um, people will use um, they'll use light sources, illumination, and pay money for it uh, to punch the, expunge their sins and work even into the evening. And um, you don't see any of that happening here in the Dawnwater Rookery. You know that it's a place where people might even party, which the rest of Damaron would be insane. No one would do that or be caught doing that at least. Except for in the Sky Hollow Towers. And um, you don't hear anything. It's completely quiet except for these noises that you hear. Like echoing out, uh, you know, blocks away. Um, but uh, you're able to make it through the Dawnwater Rookery into the edge of town. Uh, right here. So you all traveled like... Whoops. Like this. You came up to this bridge and stopped, and then you came back uh, into the Hoffenmoor, and then you were making it into this plaza, and then you saw that stuff happen, and then you made it down into alleys, and you made it across a bridge. Uh, you made another roll where you saw that other thing happen, and then you made it across this bridge into the Dawnwater Rookery, and you can make it down to the end uh, where, this, uh, where the, the docks are. So you all have made it down there. And, um... Uh, when you come to the docks, um, it's the same, uh, as you saw before, the rotted wood and the, uh, uh algae and human waste-filled water, uh, lapping against the, uh, the old rotted docks that have fallen down into disrepair, uh, where this project was never completed. And um, uh, you don't see these things when you get there, but uh, my question, uh, what I'm wondering, there's no moon in Damarung. What is it that you all would do when you come here? Like, if you just hear this quiet dock in the darkness. Also, everybody can make an awareness check, too. But uh, what would you do when you come here? I would have to uh, defer that to. Uh, oh wow! Everybody did really well so far. Uh, Let's see I, I, I dived out for five Airline. seconds. Are we rolling something? Oh. Uh, yes, an awareness check. Hey, look at me not being aware. What is your awareness stat, uh, Julianus? Uh, I needed a 59. Oh, it was a critical failure. I'm thinking that what uh, what Roar is about... I'm sorry, what, um, what uh, Ulrich is about to see, I don't know that he would be able to necessarily express to you what he's seeing. He got a critical success. The critical fail part is probably that I don't know how he would try to express what he's what he's about to see. 
Um, but before he sees it, you made it to the dock, uh, and you just it's just quiet. It smells bad here. Uh, what do you do? There's nothing happening in the darkness yet. Before the reveal, can I just run off to the bathroom? You know? Oh, sure. Sorry, bad timing. Let me do... Sounds... <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, don't worry. We're not under attack. The bad news is we do live in damp. Isn't that great? All right, well, nothing is going on then. Max would, would like to spread his arms wide and say, Oh... Succulent sucker of sucker. I hope that our suffrage has satisfied your <laughs> other S word. Um, yo. Um, Julianus. Oh, yeah. sorry. No, no, go ahead. Let me say Julianus leans in and says, Seek Sucre. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> you do that. And the thing is, like, you're... Uh, what's his name? Um, let's see. Deceased characters. Master Albrecht von, von der Sump, uh, who had this book of chaos and these weird powers and stuff. He's not here. And, like, he's the one that, that, that summoned this thing, got its attention, did all that stuff. So you say all that, and then, like... You're actually, I would say you could make a uh, arduous incantation check when you do oh boy. that. Boy, arduous. What would arduous willpower? Where, where the where the my goodness is? Okay, arduous incantation. means that you subtract thirty from your target, so you have to. All right, minus 30, submit. All right, look at that. Um, oh, no. Other way around, I think, which means no. That's correct, so I don't succeed. Julianos reluctantly pulls out that horrible book. <gasps> oh, no. It kind of goes, <laughs> perhaps <laughs> we can find... Something, but it will be very painful. <laughs> Fine, okay, hand it here. <laughs> See what we got. All right. Oh, I know. What kind of is this? heresy is going on? Like the 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 best. <laughs> oh, when I crack open the book, I'd like to go. Smells like heresy. That uh, would be an excellent time for a token. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> can make a uh, resolve check. Oh no. Uh, okay, what do I do? Look at me. I'm I am mentally and emotionally prepared for this. Wow. Yes, you are. Hiding from the cops? Not good at that. But heresy, I'm here for it. All right, I need a 59. Hey. Oh man, everybody passed. Wow. Okay, and then I'm going to roll for the amount of chaos points you will get, and then I'll describe what happens. That's not bad either. One chaos point. Has All anybody right. gone... Wait, now in, that I'm at max. You're at max? Were you at nine and you went over? Or are you just at I, nine? I think... Let's see how math works. I have just hit nine, which is all of the circles. Okay, so you still have one more to go. Gotcha. Although we're about to do that right now. So, um, okay. Um, you hear, let me see if I can bring it up here. Um, you hear voices. Um, and, uh, symbols begin to rise up out of this, uh, out of this book. Um, and your vision begins to blur. Whoops, that's kind of loud. Is it maybe is this one the and um, I don't want that one. This one. Um. And uh, 
the the air starts to, to shimmer in front of the book as you open it. And let's see. You're not at max chaos yet. Uh, what do you say now? But like as you're holding this book, something is like coming out of it and you sense that there's a will to it. Well, my intention is, and I feel stupid saying this, my intention is to read the book. I don't intend to say anything. I'm yeah. Just like, let's see what we got going on here. Uh, tendrils start to come out of the book and into your hands, and then oh, no. all of a sudden, um, uh, that that cancerous orb starts to to raise up into the sky again, blot out part of the sky. Its surface seems like it almost moves a little bit. And these figures, they start to come up out of the water, and the water starts to bur- burble and bubble out further away from you. And then, and you hear a voice, and it says, "Close the book." I close the book. Uh, you you close the book on all those tendrils, and then it like turns into smoke and goes away. But the book tries to open again. would like to not let it uh, make Julianus a Julianus will help they or, don't. Uh, make a uh, athletics check and then Julianus you can roll 1d10 and give that to him as an assist die to flip to succeed ooh nine. Uh, everybody's doing great anyway I don't always go to the gym but I think I can take a book <laughs> nice uh, you're holding the book shut um, this energy actually blasts back uh, Julianus, uh, but uh, as you're holding the book, um, it's uh, uh, an energy takes it out of your hands, and it and it's raised up over the water. And this thing, um, let me see if I have it here. I'm gonna silence the voices. Uh, yeah. This thing that's made of, um, it's probably 50 foot tall, it it comes out of the water, it has this kind of porcelain-like mask on, and its body is clearly made out of a a collection of giant maggot-like things, but they're they're probably this wide and and this long, and it writhes all over him and it forms his body, and the, the book floats in the air, and then this energy comes out of him and the book just catches on fire and you hear screaming from lots of voices uh and then it just keeps and it like it it's maggoty like hands the maggots every once in a while will come up form a finger and then fall off and then another maggot will come up and form a finger again and stuff like that and um eventually the book is destroyed and uh and it says um uh you have brought us two gifts. Uh, Juliana Sneals. Remembering last time. Oh, yeah. And what does everybody else do? I'll, I'll go into uh, to my extravagant bow and then look over at Juliana and kind of convert the bow to a kneel and, you know... <laughs> What does Ulrich do when he sees all this stuff happening? Well, I think he falls, kind of falls to his knees, and it's kind of like a kneel, but it's like more out of fear. Yeah. Um, and uh, 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 this uh, this this thing that's that's hovering up out of the water and, and looming up over you, uh, it says. Um, um, Another power has been given the elven prophecy. The city will be saved from the interloper. The city is to be devoured by Rathun in its proper time. The time is not now. The city did not belong to the interloper. It belongs to Rathun. And then you see these these figures come up out of the water, clearly from uh, kind of like uh, reflective dark eyes to now 
it's clear that bobbing up out of the water are these fish people. And uh, in the Avatar, it says, um, This other power will cleanse the city, and at its proper time, we will feast. You have done well. The city is saved, and we offer you salvation. mild feelings of regret <laughs> uh, yeah and, and indeed um, it then says we offer you can be one with us another maggot among trillions if that is what you wish to lose your insignificant self in the endless maw of Rathun that can be granted and then beneath uh, beneath this like figure um there's like this uh, this vortex that opens into the water, and you can actually see inside of the vortex is kind of like a, uh, the inside of some kind of serpent or, or fishes or, or, or creature's mouth or innards going down into this fleshy maw. Um, and uh, it gestures for you to enter. Julianos, uh, I thank you, great Rathun, but I choose to remain in the world that I can serve you after the city has been consumed and spread the glory that is Rathun. What does everybody else do? <laughs> I'm not going in there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I'll uh, I'll let Giuliano's take point on this one. Along with that, <laughs> this is not what we wish. But if you do not wish to be a part of us, you will share the fate of this city. However, for your service, if you depart from us, we will grant you a single boon. I need a second for this one. Oh no. I can't think of how Julianos would approach that. Yeah, what it what does everybody else do? Does anyone ask for something? Uh youth. Do you ask for it out loud? Uh, yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Let me roll a D100. Uh, all of a sudden, uh, thunderclouds start to gather overhead. And... Um, And then fat droplets of liquid start to fall, but um, but it feels different and it smells different. It feels thick and viscous when it when the water hits your skin. Um, 
and uh, you uh, you start to feel it smells coppery. Um, and you, when you look at it, you realize that blood is falling from the sky, and um, you can roll uh, Ulrich a D100. You, uh, over, suddenly you start to feel pain and, uh, your, your bones start to snap in places and your skin starts to stretch on your face and you're in immense pain and you can roll a resolve check and, uh, and I'll tell you what's, what happens as you double over in pain. Fifty-two. Okay, so you pass the resolve check. You're in pain, but you don't lose your mind in the process. Uh, but suddenly, uh, the voice becomes shrill, and it becomes that of a woman. And um, when you look at your hands, you're a beautiful woman, and completely young now, too. Um, but your hair, you reach up, it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, they're snakes. And uh, when you all look at him, oh God, you're here. You could end up looking at him. Oh God. Oh no. This has been an interesting quest. Oh Next. no. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm sure that you would look at everyone. I mean, why wouldn't you? So uh, everybody makes an awareness test. Oh, I love being aware. Another 15 now? I'm not very aware. Oh, I am not aware. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, before this happens, though, before this happens, does anybody else ask for anything from the from the maggot god? With uh, the benefit of hindsight, <laughs> I would like to walk in the mall. Really? Huh? I feel like I've come this far. Okay. Honestly, and I mean, it's, it's either this or I could be a me-shaped statue on a dock forevermore. So I kind of, you know, the death I choose, or or maybe the eternal life I choose. I don't I don't know what's going to happen here. Bobbin and Weaving, we got this. So I think, well, let me let me see what happens with Juliana's first, and then I think I could kind of narrow what that looks like. Well, because uh, he's trying to think of, like, what he wants, because he's been totally disillusioned with everything he's ever believed. Right. He realize he's doomed either way. Um, so I th I, the, the best I can think of is he also walks in the maw because he's probably not... Uh, I can't think of a way out for the guy. Uh, <laughs> oh. like I'm trying to to think of something like what would Julianos do, but I can't see him as much beyond a broken. Not he. I I don't. Uh, so role playing wise, I don't know either because like he's before this like infinite evil being that he's served and helped you know, and then. Like it's promised that the city will be saved by some other force, uh, other like a third party in addition to all this. But then it's like, but after all that, a century from now or sometime from now, I'm gonna eat the city anyway. Uh, and it's probably, it's probably easy enough to believe that, uh, considering what you're seeing. Uh, so yeah, I don't know what he would do, in the, okay. in terms of in the moment. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, like I was thinking, um, the uh, to be the one who uh, fells and replaces the oracles, like just take down the people who uh, directly have caused all my uh, all my troubles. Justice. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. I'm gonna go with justice. Well, yeah. Yeah. Actually, let me resolve Julianus, and then maybe that'll open up options for Max von Speed. 
It is raining blood. Droplets of blood are falling on you and covering you in the eyes, and you're all covered in blood at this point. And uh, what do you say as far as asking for justice? Vengeance against the oracles uh, and to stand in their place. I, um... How would they... How would this thing do that? Hmm. To stand in their place. That is really horrifying. I think that you can roll a d100 for that. I think I have an idea of how what it would give. Yeah, I kind of regretted that immediately. I got a 41. It's like, oh man, it's going to turn me into a statue and I'm going to fall on them. <laughs> <laughs> um, all of a sudden, um, you suffer visions and your, your eyes roll back into your head and you start to see things. The first thing that you see is uh, you, you, you see visions of the future uh, and you see um, Otwin Godhart, uh, the mutant person, and they're dying and necrotizing the rest of their body beyond their hands and it, and it reaches up into your vision and it says, he, he says, um, the angels, the angels of the gods. And then like the vision changes and all of a sudden you see a battle with fire and the cries of mutants and then you see another vision, and, and you see uh, someone stealing away in the night from Castle Avernspire, entering into a carriage. And they're wearing red robes, and they're wreathed in chaotic evil energy. And you recognize this person in your vision. And it is uh, the elder of House Theobaldo. Uh, you don't know him personally. But uh, you see him like... There's the Castle Avern Spire is in flames, and, and uh, a part of it's been destroyed, and there's this battle, but he's sneaking out of the castle and getting into a carriage and stealing away into the night. And, um, <clears throat> and then you see yourself on a, on a bloody throne in a, uh, a place deep in, in the bowels of this, uh, of this castle, and you're holding uh, some sort of arcane weapon full of magical energy and you're wreathed in the same blood like fire and you're wearing red robes now and you're in that seat of power and uh, and then like your vision comes back and you don't remember that last part anymore you can no longer remember the future but you suffer nine corruption points <laughs> okay uh. and I'll need you to roll a d100 two more times and then it will say something yeah, it's the first one. <clears throat> Twelve. And the second one is a... 84. Twelve, eighty-four. Okay, so the first one is twelve. That's definitely a big clue. Um... Ah, yes. A, uh, a blade uh, flies from, uh, uh, from, from the dark skies and strikes into the dock in front of you and, and uh, sticks into it and uh, it, it radiates this energy uh, and everywhere it is uh, it, there's ice coming out of it and you can see ice vapor just coming up out of it and um, the second one you got an 84 No, that wouldn't make sense. I'm not going to do that. Uh, and then, uh, and then it says, um, it says, find the mutant and destroy the last of them. Allow one to escape, and they will rise. All right, Julianus reaches forward. He pulls the sword out. Kind of looks at it. <clears throat> pulls his coat down. Kind of turns. Just says gentleman and walks off into the night um 
unless then, it just suddenly looks like right <laughs> it, I, I, and so I was going to say then it, it, it so uh, it says uh, uh, well no actually let's resolve uh, Max Von Speed based on what you have seen Max before Ulrich does his thing um, do you continue into the mall or do you ask for something else you know, I've, I've had some time to think, to grow wiser, and uh, I think I would like to ask for the ability to turn invisible. All right, uh, roll a d100. Great. That is an eight. Uh, you take nine corruption. Awesome. So hypothetically, if I was already at nine corruption, uh, you start back over, and then you go back up eight again, and Hopefully. then we roll for you a disorder, which we'll get to in a second. Actually, I think this tells me what your disorder is. Um, something enters into you, and. Well, uh, well. You have a friend now, and uh, and it says, "I can help you be unseen any time that you want. I look forward to working with you." I'll take it. Living the dream. <laughs> uh, do you try it out? Sure. I think that uh, suddenly you find yourself in a dark place and you no longer... You can only vaguely sense what, from your, from your human body's perception, as you change places with the demon and the demon is in control, and suddenly you shift out of, of reality and you have, like, you know, um, uh, the one ring of power vision all of a sudden. Like, everything is in infravision mode, and... Um, you can see things from the from beyond, and you're a thing from beyond. This is like uh, you're within the ethereal winds itself. Ah, oh. and uh, does the avatar of Rathun look different from his perspective? Um, yeah, you can. Ooh, you look at the avatar of Rathun. Yeah, uh, make a uh, resolve check. My object, my intention is to acquire as many chaos ranks as physically possible within a five minute span. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, what was that? Awareness? Look no, at me. It's, it's resolve, but I'll take the eight. This dude really is good at the chaos stuff. Because, like, you've passed every resolve check. You haven't passed any other check. You can't hit anything. But like every every time some awful thing, eldritch thing from beyond happens, you're like, cool. I'm just here for the heresy. Yeah. Anyways, uh, okay. So all this stuff happens, and you have this like being that's like miasmic smoke, and then there's this ice energy radiating from Julianus, uh, and this blood rain coming down, and then Ulrich asks for his wish, and then and then he looks at you all. Bear with me for a second. Also, you have these. But bear with it's, me. Uh, everybody can make an awareness check. Wait, did we already we, we already did that? We already aware uh, it can go well. Yeah. Okay. Well, here's the next cool. thing that happens. A couple of things happen. It is now well into the next day, but um, it's no longer a witching hour. Um. Before that happens, though, Ulrich, you uh, you realize that you're in the body of a beautiful woman. As far as you can tell, like you have uh, beautiful, fair skin and everything. Your voice has changed. Uh, but as soon as you look at your friends, they do turn to stone. And uh, now you you look at them, you realize that. What do you do? Uh. Do I know? Do I did? I, do I notice the snake hair? Yeah. Hmm. 
Well, then probably like, what's wrong? You hear a female voice say that. A sonorous, beautiful female voice say, what's wrong? And nothing answers because you're on a dark dock and the rains have ended and uh, this being has left. And uh, it has given you its final boon. And you are now young. Especially young for a Medusa. Well, then I'll look away from them. You look away from them. They're still stone. And yeah, you're here alone in the dark with your friend stone now. Are the snakes the kind of snakes that strangle people? As long as I still have my strangling You still power. have your stuff, yes. Okay, the, yeah, this is okay. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, I just <laughs> met them. <laughs> <laughs> And now I can go into advanced strangling. <laughs> that really is just like a perfect, perfect wrap up. <laughs> I, I feel like we all got what we deserved. Wait, no, no, no. It's not over. Okay. But, but this is, I just want to make sure I understand what does Ulrich do in this situation? That's what I'm trying to make sure I understand before anything else happens. Well, This is spooky, but also kind of cool. Because maybe he's like going mad a little, like knowing his power now, but also changed from like the evil magic. Right. You already passed your resolve check, right? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I did. Gotcha. Okay, good. So I guess like, I don't know. I think he probably jumps in the water to... Swim away. Okay. So um, everybody's stone. So then this is what happens next. You go into the water. Is this because this is like your layer now? <laughs> You're like, okay, next thing. Gotta yeah, build a Medusa go. layer, obviously. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you feel right at home in the dark, tepid waters uh, of the, the waste that, um, that people... Uh, uh, you know, as it as it flows in from the Dawnwater Rookery from the canals, and it comes up against this this bank, um, and you go out into the water and you stay there until uh, until the sun begins to rise, and then your friends start to come too, and the stone falls away and they're back again. Now they don't see you yet, but you realize that um, it's about eight hours later. Um, I will not say that you were anybody's going to incur a penalty from that. Although you will need to find a place to sleep today, which you'll lose time from. Um, but uh, yeah, it seems that when you look at people, they turn to stone, if they look you in the eyes, for about eight hours. Well, that sounds useful. That's pretty cool. So, uh, meanwhile... Julianus and Maximilian, you uh, you come to uh, Maximilian. You're back the way you were, except for the whole time you've just had a conversation with this demon who uh, delights in telling you all the horrific things that it has helped to bring misery to to the many universes across eons. And that's what you've done for the past eight hours. Ooh, productive little guy. All right, I'm I'm getting it. Max is evil. <laughs> Evil is such a strong word. I'm more like morally ambivalent. I, this doesn't feel very ambivalent. Uh, but uh, anyways, um, and Juliana, so you 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 notice when, that there's kind of some icy uh, energy that comes out from your sleeves and stuff, and um, and you have the blade on your back and everything. Uh, but uh, oh, hey, that's cool. You know what I think is. Now would be a very good time to cash in on the uh, the fame from that last uh, last last event, because oh, you know he would be getting a, uh, like oh we're, we're going to bring you to the oracles they're going to thank you personally oh excellent <laughs> yeah oh man <laughs> yeah well uh, you'll see the oracles if you intend to go to the to the dinner party tonight um you're already um 
but I guess, yeah, that would probably be necessary because um, if you all went, Maximilian has a thing and then Ulrich would be his retainer. Although, how would you do that? Yeah, what, what to do with this now? You've got a Medusa. That's with pretty easy. You just, you just need a hood and sunglasses. Yeah. Yeah, just robes. And I can always uh, wrestle people with snakes now. You could be, it could be like, what are those people? It's not the Akani, the people from Star Wars, like Knights of the Old Republic 2, and they have the, the thing that comes down over their eyes. Mm -hmm. um, Base and, nuns. Yeah, it is. It's like a, it's a sort of proprietary, or not propri uh, 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 propriety, a uh, uh, modesty, uh, but it's it's the eyes. There's a thing for that. I don't remember what they're called. But yeah, you could get one of those. It would cost you um, for that and for attire to attend the event probably a crown. A crown is a huge amount of money. But before we get ahead of ourselves. What do you do? Also, like just starting out, what does Julianus and Maximilian do? And also, where is Ulrich and you don't know? And why were you staying? Like, what do you guys say? Did we see Ulrich? Like, do we recall looking into the eyes of a beautiful woman and then being ghosted for eight hours? Yeah, except she had like serpent eyes, you know, like the slits. Oh, and then like s hot. snake stuff coming All off right. her head. Yeah. Uh huh. Huh. Very confused. No, it all makes sense to me. I think Ulrich is a snake person now. But there's a lot of information I don't know what to do with, and that just adds to the pile. It's 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 pretty. You just kind of roll with it. It's just like it's snake person. Snake person. Snake person. Hmm. I mean, if you'd, if you'd seen what I'd seen that guy do with his hands, it, you know, there's, there's certain things don't need to make sense. You just accept it and roll with it. Oh, yeah, and you have two disorders, so let's see what your other disorder is. Because you're chaos stuff. I, I, can, I currently have two corruption and I have no disorders, so feel free to fill me in. <clears throat> Corruption. All right. I'll give you a couple options here. You can either options. roll for your disorder, or I can give you a few options and you can kind of see what makes sense to you. Oh, well, let's see what the options are. Okay, so there are three broad categories. Addictions, insanities, and... Oh, no, it's going to be this one. Oh, it's going to be this one. All right. Uh, everybody's going to get one of these <laughs> by now. Actually, actually, no, just you. Uh, so you'd roll a D100. Yeah, no, no, no. This is what's going to happen. All right. That's a 94. Ooh. Oh, it's perfect, too, because it's related to the demon that's in your head already. All right. It's amazing how here. the dice are. Yeah. Multiple demons in my head? Oh, great. No, no, no. It's just, it open this is related to the demon that's in your head anyway. So. Gotcha. Um, oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, it has a really bad result. Um... And then I'm trying to make sure I understand. When you say bad, bad, do you mean bad like bad, bad? Or do you mean like fun, bad? I mean like uh, there's a, a negative effect that you receive from this as well. But you do mutate. Oh, great. Of mutating. Um, 
I think... Let's see, what is it? You have a demon in your head. Uh, you have begun to turn into a vampire. Which is actually, of the people of Damarung, that's a very favorable mutation. Yeah, now that's... I'm, I'm... Uh, it's it going to save me a lot of money on leeches. It says uh, the afflicted becomes... Uh, so you are uh, afflicted by a mutation of the Prince of Violence, which is the demon that's in your head anyways, uh, is, is uh, a uh, cornean demon. And uh, it says that you become bloodthirsty, extremely erratic and aggressive in some of your mannerisms. You is see and seek to indulge in all manner of cruel pleasures. And now you flip... The results to fail on all fellowship-based tests. But you you also get some effects from it. Um, uh, there are also other bad things. I'm trying to figure out if this is like a uh, 10 or more corruption in a game. Demonic host. Yep, this is, this is all the stuff you would get. The Taint of Chaos. Um, I think this might be two separate things. I don't think you're a vampire. It's just not organizable, oh. so it's hard to tell. Yeah. I'll let you pick, though. Would you rather be a vampire, or would you rather have this, like, blood... Just want to murder people? Being a vampire sounds cool. Okay. I will send all this later, but here's some highlights. Um... You can never you can never recover from peril again. Once a peril condition affects you, um, so never mind what I said about the flipping the fellowship results and all the violence and stuff. Um, the only way to re recover from a peril condition is to drink someone's living blood. Every oh, time you, every time you do, you suffer six more corruption. Um, every time you do. Drink blood, you gain the following abilities. Uh, you cannot cross running water. Uh, you do not cast a reflection. You can see perfectly in the dark as if daylight. Um, whenever you cause an injury that makes someone bleed, they automatically go up to the next damage condition. And Can my when it, daggers still bleed thing? There was something about that. I, I can't remember. I, I thought it was mentioned once, and then we just kind of never got back to it. And anytime you're in light, uh, you will take 2d10 plus 2 damage of fire every minute, eventually catching on fire. Ah. We have to get you an asbestos cloak. Yep, so, cloaks for everyone. <laughs> seriously... There's a bunch of other stuff, too. I'll send it all later. Bad things happen when you're touched with holy water or other divine things. And uh, if you're wounded... Really, the there's not a lot of divinity going on in this city. The only way for you to recover is to drink blood if you get hurt as well. And uh, if you don't, then eventually you get a bloodthirst where you're forced to just get blood from whoever's nearby. Awesome. Do I get fangs or am I just like just a dude who drinks blood? Uh, everything that you enjoyed before, this, here's some other stuff. The wines and the foods that you enjoyed in your life taste like ash. Balls. Uh, instead, you desire only warm blood. Um, if you don't get warm blood every so often, you go into a deep slumber uh, until the feeling passes. Holy sacraments, garlic, tokens of faith give you a terrible headache when you look at them. Okay, so now you're evil. It's my first evil character. We'll see how it goes. I don't know. I don't feel like this changes that much. No, I feel it, <laughs> it's pretty evil. Anyways, I, uh, go ahead. I broke the corruption thing too. Do I have to roll some up or? Oh, I had an idea for you. Uh, let me see if something Ooh. fits. I I would imagine it's an elemental corruption. Basically, you get, begin to take on the effects of this blade. I think you start to become ice. Oh. 
looking for the corruption table. Taints of Chaos, Appendix G. Uh, meanwhile, you guys are talking this out. What are we going to do? By all, actually, do talk this out. What are you going to do? Yeah, well, you got any plans? Um, by the orders of Rathut, I have a few murders to carry out. Oh, I'm all about murders. Anyone interesting? Ah, well, there's mutants. Um, and the oracles are on that list. Oracles, pretty difficult to kill. I think the sword might be helpful. So it might be helpful, but the problem is it's a logistical thing. It's like getting to them physically to stab them. I believe you they'll know. be at that party tonight. We'll be at that party. Do you want to come to the party? I would love to join you to a party. I, I was looking forward to good foods, like, well, I suppose eight hours ago. And now <laughs> not so much. That's a bit disappointing. Hmm. I don't quite have it worked out yet, but I would give you a taint of chaos. Uh, and the taint of chaos would basically be... Um, uh, actually, I'm going to use this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to modify it. It's Icy Skull. So imagine the... Um, what's that uh, character? Uh, the one that rides motorcycles uh, and turns into oh, a skeleton. Uh, Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider. Like, imagine it's Ghost Rider, but instead of turning into a fury skeleton, you turn into an ice fire skeleton. And like, you know, and this is something that happens whenever you succeed on an intimidation or interrogation test. Your character doesn't know that yet. And it immediately provokes a metal fear. band. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, this is all pretty metal. Okay, so... <laughs> So you're all are talking about going to the dinner, um, and Ulrich, you see them on the dock talking. What do you What do you do? Well, I probably swim back with seaweed. I was gonna not vandalize their statues or anything with them, but <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what's up, guys? Do you just look at them? And we turn. Uh, no, I have my eyes closed this time. Okay. <laughs> The snakes, they're calm. And it looks like beautiful hair. Uh, and she, her eyes are closed, but you see this beautiful woman arise out of the water. I think it, since we kind of knew what was, or had an idea what was going on, you just kind of hear, hey guys, we both look and go, ah, ah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would imagine you can get her some clothes and a way of like hooding herself so that whenever her eyes are hooded and uh, she's not able to lock eyes a gaze, the, the snakes don't go crazy as much and it looks more like hair. And so uh, wearing a hood and cloak and stuff, you're probably able to walk around like a woman. Um, and um, yeah, so uh, you, we're, we're, we're going to try to go to the dinner. Is that the plan? What do you think? Should we should we do that or should we? Uh... I also is anyone on is anyone on any peril track or damage track? Is anyone wounded or injured? Nope. No, somehow no. Okay. All right. Anyone requires medical attention or uh, a bleeding. I think I'm don't be afraid lightly to ask. wounded. <laughs> I don't know if I healed from that. I have lightly wounded. So you can move up. Some... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Obviously, if you require bandaging, I have bandages and bandaging skill. Um, you you will need in order to not take a penalty. You all will need to rest, anyways. Uh, so uh, in resting, you remove one damage track. Uh, so, uh, I assume that you probably go back to Maximilian's apartment. Although it's daytime. What does Maximilian do about that? You can actually feel your skin beginning to burn. That's a, that's a great question. You know, it was so inconvenient being out at night until it wasn't night anymore. There's just no good time of day to walk around this city. I, I, how does this work? Is it only like happen if my skin is exposed or does it? 
do clothes not help me? Uh, I think the problem is, I think you can probably use coverings. You have two things that you have two mutants that obviously need to be covered. And then one mutant that like <clears throat> you don't need to cover quite so heavily. We've, you, we've got our heist kits, which I think contained disguise kits. I might be yeah. making that up. You can probably but cover yourself, but you're going to be bulky and uncomfortable. And it'd be like Juliana's escorting to, you know, bulky covered people and in, back into the city or something. Um, but I'll say that you can do that if you're trying to get to your apartment. But it's disorienting and it makes you feel sick. You do not like being in the, out in the light at all. Yeah, well, I wasn't in for a good time anyway. I'm in the poor part of the city. I'm sure somebody around here would be more than willing to uh, host us. Oh, in the Dawnwater Rookery. Yeah. Um, let's talk about what you see there. Um, you take your heavily cloaked friends back into the city. And uh, let me raise this up. <clears throat> Interesting. Okay. Um, you, uh, <clears throat> you travel into the Dawnwater Rookery and, uh, you start approaching where that tavern is. You might be able to find some rooms there. Um, everything is eerily silent. Most places, there's no one out even working. Uh, however, you can hear the footfalls of Holy Guard marching around into the city in various parts. Um, there's a stronger presence here than there is in the Sky Hollow Towers now, which is an inversion of how it usually is. And you see the telltale lights the lanterns of the magical aurors that determine whether or not someone's a mutant and verse signers are here hunting. And, um, the alley you're in is silent, uh, except in the windows, in the windows, although they're not saying anything, you see faces peering down at you from the windows, just staring at you. And you hear someone yelling, further down the street where the tavern is that you went into. And the Versigners have dragged out poor Gotlib, the Stevedore. And uh, they are questioning him. Any, how many Holy Guards are there? There are four Holy Guard. There is one um, Ethereal-ist with the lantern, and then one verse signer. We, so, <clears throat> uh, is this the tavern that had the spooky basement, or is this a... Uh, this is not the one. This is the one where you had the the girl and the hood and then the guy that was the criminal and you arranged the deal to get the criminal stuff. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, thinking we should hide and we should find, uh, uh, boot went, wait, so who's, who's the other guy, sorry, uh, that they dragged out? Gortlib, the, oh, uh, the smuggler and Stiv Stevedore. Okay, that was the guy that uh, gave us the the range, the business deal to get your stuff into the port with the uh, the, okay. the thieving uh, tools. Yeah, well, he's gonna give us up real quick. Uh, <laughs> um. Can y'all hear me? And to losing you. Uh oh. Losing Steve. Oh. What do you think, Roar? 
Well, I think the same that that guy's going to turn on us if we do anything. So we need to find a place to hide. All right. Just let him perish. Is that is that what you're thinking, Caleb? I was thinking about rescuing him, but uh, whatever the group decides. What's your intent behind rescuing him? Oh, he was he was just he was nice to us. He got us stuff. We engaged in commerce with him. I don't know that he deserves to die. All right. Well, it looks like we lost Steve for now. Um, no, you're breaking up, Steve. Here we go. That does that happen was sometimes. Nothing wanted to work. Okay, so basically, uh, um, Max von Spee here is is proposing that perhaps, perhaps uh, you could try to rescue him because uh, he was helpful, and these guys are buttholes, and you know he probably didn't deserve what he, <laughs> you know. Ulrich, on the other hand, was agreeing with you. He was saying that, you know, perhaps we could... He's probably going to give us up, and that could be a problem, so... Yeah, uh, I don't think there's honor among thieves. I think he's going to screw us to this. Well, uh, at the same time, he's kind of dead either way. Uh, do we have a game plan to for rescuing any, any ideas? Just gonna go with stabbing. There's three of us. We're cool. There's four of them. <laughs> One of my character's major obstacles is that uh, I have simple melee, but I don't have martial melee. Well, that's fine. You're in the same boat as me, then. You can yeah. you can you can imagine that that sword uh, would work for that purpose. Well, it, was certainly, it was certainly uh, given to you on purpose. So. Excellent. Okay, then I got a uh, pretty decent. I got two dots. Let's uh, and how many were there? There's three of them. Four of them. There's a uh, one verse Heiner. There are. Um, I think I said there were four Holy Guard. And one etherealist, one person that oh. is magical Ooh. and he can <coughs> suss out if someone's a mutant. They're, they're multiplying. Yeah. yeah, very, very outnumbered. Even two holy guard was a little. <coughs> I don't think that they're multiple. I think that's why I said. I think I said there were four holy guard. This makes mm -hmm. sense. Mm. Yeah, I think we should hide. If we right. fight, Rest in peace, got the... if oh, we we're fight, then it might attract, like, even more, or like people won't help us because they saw us kill, like those guards. Yeah, but if we help him, then he can get us inside the tavern and we could sleep. That's what I thought, too, because he might have like a, his own safe house that he was probably trying to get to. But maybe not. Maybe we can... I think I've got some oil. I'm thinking maybe we could just do a distraction. Um, climb onto the roof. Light a couple pots of oil. Throw them down behind them. And they'll be like, ah, fire. And then he can... That, the that might take a while. It seems like they're pretty. They want to murder. Yeah, they're going to kill him on the spot. There we go. Finally found it. Yeah. All right. I'm going to appoint a collar. Oh, cool sword. Do you want to know what it does? Don't you want to try stabbing someone with it? Uh, Roar, I'm going to say you're the group collar. So given the full facts of the case here, are we going to allow uh, Gottlob to to perish and wait in, uh, in the shadows of the alley? Or are you going to... Um, and you know, just to be clear... Um, the Holy Guard like to remove bodies. So they'll be gone. Uh, so all you got to do is wait. If you just want to let God love die, then you just wait and they'll be gone. Uh, or do you want to try to rescue God love? Hmm. And you got to pick.
Hiding might be better just because it'd be a fight that would like let us try out our new things, but then it'll show everybody's watching from the windows. It'll show that we're all mutants and stuff. So I think we should hide. All right. Uh, you hide, and um, sure enough, they, they, they kill Gottlob. Um, as they do, they don't waste any time about it, and then they drag his body off, a trail of blood smearing across the ground, uh, and then they pull him into a boat, and then they paddle off away from there. And other than the smear of blood that Gottlob left on the planks, uh, the, uh, the door is closed to the... Um, uh, to the Darling Pig Tavern. Uh, there's no noise. Um, and there's no one around. We can uh, make our way in. It's currently close to evening, by the way. Uh, or I would say, well, let me rephrase. It gets kind of meta. In order to rest and make it to the uh, the thing, you would need to probably rest soon. <laughs> um, if you open the door to the Darling Pig and you look in, it is completely vacant. There's no one in here. Convenient. Lovely. Let's pick out some choice rooms. You go and check out the rooms. They are disgusting. Uh, straw beds at best. Um, but you're not going to find anything better here in the rookery anyways. And there's no charge. There's nobody here to charge you. Uh, do you guys, uh, you rest here? Yes, I think that sounds like an excellent idea. All right. Um, sounds like a good spot. That means that uh, Ulrich, your... Um, Damage th track goes back. You're no no longer hurt, and um, uh, everybody's rested. Evening is approaching. Uh, if you're going to try to make it to the dinner, you'll need to try to do it soon. Um, also, are you going to try to find Otwin Gotthard? Yeah, I think we should try to find Otwin. All right. Not sure we have time. Time seems to move obscenely quick in this city. It's true. Yeah. What what, what do we want with Otwin? Oh, it was uh, something he's... that the the thing told Julianus. Yeah, in a vision. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't I don't know what any of that means. So, he's, like, uh, what's our plan there? He's fallen out of favor, and uh, is in possession of something that may be very helpful to us. The uh, thing we stole. Rathun wants him unalived and all of his friends. Not Otwin. Right. Otwin Gotthard, uh, he just said to go find him. But then there's the the house elder that he's like, yeah, don't let him escape. Okay. Sorry, I misheard that. Um, and then you no longer remember the part where uh, you're sitting on the throne. That part. But, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, cool. Okay, so <clears throat> I'll roll just once. Break my rules here. What do we got here? And another one. This dice mechanic is ridiculous. Oh God! How long? It's always a good thing. So you're traveling back, and you see uh, as you cross the bridge in Handlaren that uh, there's an entire two blocks uh, where mutants are in an active fight with the Holy Guard, openly fighting in the streets, uh, and it's utter chaos and madness, and their buildings on fire, and fighting is broken out here. This is inconvenient. Oh, excellent. The guards are distracted. I love when that happens. Let's There's ski down. Is the plan to just run 
Is that the is that the idea? Or okay. Uh, shadow to shadow, not to, you know, just kind of yeah. bobbing and weaving, staying out of the way. You can attempt to make a. Uh, everybody can attempt to make an athletics check. And you fail again. Good at chaos, though. 42. 42. Athletics, athletics. And 30. Oh. Um, Thank goodness for my uh, special inquisitor. Or no, uh, There's an ability I have that gives me S5 to untrained things. So hooray for that. Nice. <laughs> yeah, so you're, you are running uh, Julianas and... and uh, Ulrich, uh, you're very fast, and you're able to make it through the streets as mutants like leap through the air and pounce onto nearby buildings and are ripping people apart. And the Holy Guard is fighting them in the streets and stuff. And and um, and you're running. However, unfortunately, uh, Maximilian, you are not as athletic as everyone else. And the voice in your head, uh, you can actually sense them sort of sitting back and watching, almost like a TV from the backs of your eyes, just like just watching, just enjoying a show, and it starts laughing at you. Like, <laughs> Maximilian, you, oh, you are not cut out for this. I, I understand that. I didn't do running in school. School. Oh, mortal futility. Maximilian, let me, let me handle this. Well, I'm all about it. Don't let me stop you. Let uh, me stand in your way. We're going to roll a chaos die for that. And it landed on a six. And we roll another chaos die. And uh, you now take eight more chaos points. And because it's a six, I think something happens. Okay. Something so bad happens. Eight, which means... One something... Something, something, something. Actually, I'm going to go here to check that. It just says something really bad happens if, uh, if you roll a six on a chaos die. That doesn't tell me anything. You also, I guess, roll chaos die. That's another thing I've done. You roll chaos die every time you uh, take damage as well. That's dramatic. This seems like a lot of chaos. Yeah, it's supposed to run out of control really quickly. Like the peril and chaos stuff is supposed to not be... It's supposed to really get out of control. Um, Man, trying to, evil is so inconvenient in this universe. I'm trying to figure out the... Uh, Racing, corruption. I think I'm. I'm just gonna say you're gonna gain another disorder. Um, and this time it's you mutating. One of you. <laughs> so roll a D100. Alrighty, thanks for nothing, demon in my head. I'll describe what he does in a second. <laughs> I rolled a twenty-eight. A twenty-eight. Uh, this time, something else happens. Um, uh -huh. you, uh, you suddenly gain a, a taste for... Flies start to pour out of your mouth, and your eyes yeah. go black. And all of a sudden, you one. feel like you are looking out from your eyes as if you're not actually in control of your body. Uh, just imagine like sitting on a couch watching uh, out of a, two big windows, like television, as, as you're watching Max von Spee show. And, uh, but you're not actually in Max von Spee. And then all of a sudden, like, the vision changes. And uh, <clears throat> Julianos and, and Ulrich, when you look back, Max is gone. He just disappears in plain sight. You keep running. There's a battle, like, raging around you as well. 
pause for a brief second. Uh, look at Ulrich. Go. Uh, go? <laughs> we gotta get out of here. <laughs> we just kind of run. Very confused. And then, uh, uh, Ulrich, you can make a resolve check. And, um, all right, you guys run, uh, and then I'll describe. Uh, so, <clears throat> Max, you're, um, you're, this thing is, is running and stuff, and, and you find that he's keeping up with uh, Julianos and Ulrich just fine. 82 fails. All right, um, I'm going to see if this affects your peril. Let's see, so I roll a d6 plus what this thing can do. Four. Four is eight. What is your peril threshold? Eight. Eight. Okay, so it meets your peril threshold. I think it has to exceed it. So you are not imperiled. <clears throat> Anyways, um, Max, you uh, you become obsessed uh, I think I, I even think this is kind of meta because it's a demonic possession. Like, even though this is a broke world, you probably are literally on a couch watching the Max von Spee show within your own psyche, and you have like a bag, a bucket of popcorn. You reach in to eat it, and it's flies and bugs. You, and then you suddenly like want that so bad, and uh, now you want blood and filth. You love eating filth. You love to play with insects and pick at wounds, and you love to watch blood flow and disease spread. And it says every time... Well, Evil Max was fun for about five seconds. You, you, you flip to fail any brawn-based skill test, so long as you have this mutation. All right. Are there ways right. to unmute it? Uh, I think this one wears off, is what I have from it. That's the Old impression group. I get. Yeah, but they can stack up. <laughs> As more and more chaos happens, it can start spiraling out of control, and you just mutate into something like, uh, you know, the thing or something. But anyways. Wild. One uh, day you just become a flesh blob on a bridge. Exactly. <laughs> oh. What do you think? <laughs> okay, uh, you guys make it to um, Castle Avernspire in this way as evening falls. And um, let's see. Are you able to grab some nice clothes somewhere on the way? Yeah. So you have like, uh, but you'll need to spend a crown. I will. I will make this sacrifice. Just one crown. Um, and you, uh, I'll describe kind of what you see here. Um, um, oh no, I have it right here, I think. Uh, when you approach Castle Avernspire, you, uh, you leave... The city, you can see that uh, the Holy Guard have set up things on the on the edges of what's called the uh, <clears throat> the halls, and it's actually outside of the city's walls, like the the, the actual walls that have been built here. Um, this area is one of the oldest parts of the city, and when the oracles came here and migrated based on their religious visions, they. Um, uh, they had not built Castle Avernspire. They occupied it. But Castle Avernspire has like a, a human type of architecture as opposed to the Sky Hollow Towers and the Fortress and Tower of uh, So, But it pre-existed. It was here. An old castle that was already here. And um, this is where the crypts of the city are. We're out here in the towers. And Tower of the mighty cathedral the kind of saint peter's uh of the of this place and um when you you see uh, a procession of acolytes and a number of burghers and noblemen arriving and they're flanked by motionless 
disciplined holy guard in bright crimson robes and their faces covered in masks. And uh, but the 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 yard here and the entrance is in embarrassing disrepair. Uh, of all the like in the sky hollow towers, everything looks very nice and it's always kept kept very nice. Um, but the uh, the pathways here are overgrown and portions of the castle itself are sunken in, uh, and the stonework is collapsed in places. And um, <clears throat> it's very odd to see people in such finery uh, coming into a place that at least the entrance looks like that. And I will put you all in Castle Avernspire, and we will resolve the dinner. And yes, you find uh, some nice clothes. You find, for your Medusa friend, you find one of those, I don't know what they're called. Also, the lady from Kingdom of Heaven, she wore one of those things. It's made it's for modesty. Of for, of, thanks, Caleb. It's a veil. I'm always here for you. Thank you. It's a veil. And then, like, you've got, like, nice, you know, like, hoods and dresses and things. And so, um, this Lady Ulrich is your retainer, Max von Spee. Uh, and then you have uh, Julianos. Um, my question is, do you just stroll up in there like and say, I am Julianos. I'm the one that saved Lady Aine uh, Norne? Or like, how do you do it? I guess I'm just... Uh... Uh, Max von Spee's guest and just if people recognize me they recognize me uh, if they ask me who I am I'll give them my name mm. Versheiner Julianus um, but uh, otherwise I just kind of I'm just following him in minding my own business nobody look at me don't make this difficult <laughs> um yeah, um, there is a, uh, uh, the Holy Guard that's here, they, uh, they kneel when they see you, and they say, you honor us, Lord. I simply seek to fulfill my vocation, and nothing more. It is your service that is the true service to this city. That's why we like you, the most humble man in the city. going to uh, put your tokens in here. Hopefully you should be able to see. I'll make sure that it has vision. It does not. And make sure everybody can use their tokens. Did not have it. There we go. <clears throat> and uh, when you enter, when you go into the entrance uh, and you follow this procession, there is a, uh, um, uh, what would you call this person? A uh, maitre d'. A uh, and they, uh, they have uh, a lectern with a list, and they say, Ah, um, Lord Maximilian, it is, it's a pleasure to see you this evening. I'll have to get you a new token for your Medusa there, uh, Roar. <clears throat> we'll have to stick with old Ulrich for now, though. It's, it's, a, it's a, a pleasure to to see you as well I, I believe I am expected um, and then and then he looks at Julianos and he says well first of all responding to Maximilian he says uh, yes and <clears throat> is this your uh, um, your companion for the evening and he smirks and he looks at uh, Ulrich indeed this is this is this is my plus one, and this over here is my, uh, my bestest friend, Julianos. And then he, st he startles, and he's like, Ju Julianos, the, the verse on my lord. Uh, and uh, Julianos, you, uh, you see the holy garden here, they all kneel. 
uh, when they see you and you recognize this person here. Um, I'm going to pop him up. I don't know that you know him personally, but you do recognize him. That is the uh, captain of the Holy Guard. Now, that is a sort of different thing than uh, what it probably sounds like. The captain of the Holy Guard is um, a sort of somewhat elected position. So if you imagine that you have, I don't know how it works in Canada, but if you have like uh, local sheriffs and you have like professional city police that that's their profession, that's what they do all the time, uh, then you maybe have an elected official that's actually their head and that maybe isn't his career, you know what I mean? And that's kind of how the the guard captain is. Um, he is not uh, some brainwashed killing machine like the other holy guard. He is uh, some sort of noble who's who's been bestowed this title and position. But, uh, we, in, we here in Damarong believe strongly in democratic control of the police. Yeah, aristocratic. It's a, yeah, Juliana says, no, please, please, please rise. I, I'm deserving of no honors. I'm simply doing what I was tasked to do. The guard captain strides forward and he says, Is it true what they said? Uh, the holy guard that accompanied you said that you saved Lady Ina Rinray's life and slew three, three mutants, uh, one... Terrible mutant. It it the guard followed me. I, I followed leads. I made vile discoveries of heresy. Uh, and I managed to have the guard assist me. They they did everything. I merely blocked a window. I see. Well, humble, of course, uh, and uh, pious. We uh. That's very admirable. I, I, <clears throat> um, uh, Bordwart, uh, we can make an exception for, for the hero of the hour, can we not? Uh, I, I, I'm sure that um, the oracles would be happy to speak with Julianos, and um, I wouldn't want to displease his, his, uh, his masters, after all. And, uh, and he says, um, uh, he says, yes, yes, of course, uh, guard captain, uh, if you'll please, uh, and he motions to his left down this corridor, and he says, if, if you'll enter in by that corridor, uh, dining arrangements have been made for you, um, and, um, uh, and, and they're ready for you. Yeah, Juliana says kind of like a, a small bow, and we'll follow uh, Exabon Spee. The guard captain bows back, and then he returns back to his position, speaking to the holy guard. Uh, and the holy guard, they also, they stood up after you said, you know, basically for them to do so. Whoops. I didn't mean that token. Um, and then, uh, yeah. What do you do? Right, let's uh, let's head in the in the indicated direction. Make sure to like make sure to, like spin on a few servants to go past and help you blend in. This that... this was the corridor here. Or... Yeah, I'm sorry. I think I have the old school re reveal stuff. Let me do that. Or reveal this uh, this stuff here. Um, and... Yeah, the Spee should be in the lead. Papers. Okay, you see the corridor all the way down through here. Uh, this room has some paintings in it and uh, sconces with uh, with uh, uh, torchlight, and uh, the entire place is much more rustic and uh, old-fashioned than something that would be in the, like the Sky Hollow Towers. Um, there is a man here. Uh, who is uh, trying to comfort a woman uh, who's crying, and uh, and then another man over here who's who's standing looking concerned about uh, about it. I'd like to I'd like to go uh, up next to the man who looks concerned and join him, visibly looking concerned at the at the crying for like five seconds, and then I'll continue. Oh, nice. 
Okay. While we're stopping, uh, funding him. Julianos is going to kind of strain his ears to try to see if he can pick up on anything they're doing or that, uh, what, whatever they're talking about. Make an eavesdrop check. Eavesdrop perception. Yeah, 74. Hey, 24. 24. Um, as you're passing by and you and you listen to eavesdrop, um, uh, you're, you can hear them talking. You notice that with your hand there's icy vapors coming from your sleeve and you have to kind of tamp it down and hide it so that it doesn't clearly come out. And um, uh, the woman is crying. The man's trying to comfort her. And the woman is saying that basically the staff here have started to change and uh and that some of them have begun to disappear and they don't come back to work sometimes and she doesn't know what happens to them and she's worried it's going to happen to her Ooh, i'm going to uh whisper that to x one speed that there's something strange happening the strangeness isn't out of the ordinary, but the event. <laughs> the staff are disappearing. Yeah, from, oh, yes. Those lazy party. lower classes and stuff. Yeah, yeah. the, the <laughs> change does seem to be hitting everywhere, doesn't it? Um, all right. Let's see here. Come on. That's one. Yes. Lots of hallways. Uh, yeah, so uh, when you go down into this hallway, you see uh, a dimly lit, lit stone uh, antechamber, a sort of receiving room that is not decorated and is barren. And uh, this holy guard opens a door into a, a, a very narrow hallway. Uh, it's sort of cramped and uncomfortable with old stone. Uh, but you can see the light pouring in from the other side, uh, where a large candle type of chan chandelier is uh is hanging overhead with uh all sorts of everyone who's important in the city of dameron and uh let's see here i'll try to describe this really quickly i know we're running out of time so i apologize that this will be a rather condensed version of the uh the dinner but i will describe what you all see here um Let's see. Uh, just kind of touring the room uh, without going into a lot of specifics. Uh, give me... There we go. Um, <clears throat> you have the noble families that are facing each other on either end of uh, this big dining uh, chamber. And then you have uh, House Brideheart in the place of honor, seated at the throne. Uh, and in particular, Adelgis Brideheart, who is kind of the elder of the convocation, the ruling uh, aristocracy of the city. And then there are some people in armor who um, you've never seen before, and they look like, like knights, uh, which seems kind of out of place. Uh, there's not like a knightly order uh, in Damrung or anything like that. Uh, and then there is... The, f the infamous or famous, however you look at it, the oracles themselves. And uh, when you enter uh, here, the oracles in unison, they turn their heads and they, they look at you. Uh, several of them are not masked, but um, the high oracle on his throne is masked. High oracle Erwell, who's like the pope. And you see in the center here, other uh, merchants and nobles, some clearly from other lands. Uh, they're being attended. Uh, food's being brought out from, uh, from doors leading off to and hallways into the side. And uh, one of them comes up to you, an attendant, and they, said, uh, and they say, if you'd please uh, follow me, uh, I'll show you to your seats. Of course, of course. Yeah. And uh, he points to this uh, this this kind of couched um, 
uh, sort of like a, what do you call it? A booth. Um, and there's all sorts of food laid out for you. They start bringing drinks and things and, and setting things out for you to eat. And it's really good looking. Ulrich, you've never seen food this good before. Yeah, this is great. Um, across the table, someone is having a conversation this a ways. So I'll use this ruler like that. And they're talking to these people over here about trade routes from the east and trying to open up trade despite the embargo and the security concerns. And uh, the noble houses are talking among their, themselves, and they're staying seated in their seats of power. This one is notably absent. Right here. Oh, I think I know who's... That's awkward. <laughs> uh, what do you all do? Or is there anything you want to do? As, the, uh, as you start to eat dinner and... The uh, people start speaking to you. These people here are not talking to you. Uh, but these people over here are very curious. They ask you who you are, uh, why you're here. Um, in particular, they ask uh, you, um, Maximilian, like, and what is your business in Damerlang? Oh, I'm a, I am a member of the nobility here. But additionally, of course, I am an, an artisan... Of the body, I am a doctor of oh. high profession. One of the very few of high quality around here. If you come up with uh, any ailment or even are just feeling slightly off color, do feel free to stop by my place or, or send for me and allow me to, to bleed you a little bit. Oh, a man of medicine. Wonders. And he looks over at <laughs> his friend. I might like to take you up on that. Uh, let me get his name. Uh, he says, um, uh, My name is uh, um, Tariq, and uh, I, uh, I would love to, uh, while I'm in town, do that, uh, if, if it sounds quite nice. Yes, perhaps you two could have a, a drink together. <laughs> yes. And he uh, he says that he's a merchant from the Eastern Vale um, on the far borders uh, near a, a vast desert called the Everquiet. And... Um, a long ways to come. Yes, well, uh, uh, the trade routes into, uh, into Damarung in the Silver Mine Valley were lucrative uh, for generations, but... Uh, uh, the recent security concerns here have uh, they've they've affected our profits greatly, and so I hope uh, that uh, tonight we might get some answers. And at that, um, this uh, this person here raises up. I won't repeat what she said, <laughs> but basically she comes out. She stands in front of this vacant throne, and uh, it's Lady uh, it's Lady Einarinre, Lucerina Einarinre, uh, the elf. And she's the only elf in the room. And she basically says that this convocation has accomplished nothing. And everything falls silent. Um, and she says, uh, if uh, this, this, um, um, you all concern yourselves with the protocols of nobility, with all of these fine things in front of you. That did not save my father's life. You are what the prophecy speaks of. This convocation is damned. And my house no longer sees a reason to be a part of it. And she walks out and everybody starts murmuring. And uh, after that scene, she just walks out and leaves, leaves, the, uh, leaves the throne. And everybody's murmuring and stuff like that. And you can see uh, Adelgis Bridehard. He... Uh, um, he has been completely still the entire time. Um, and, uh, starts to stand up to talk, but 
and murmurs instead, and an insect crawls out of his mouth like a roach. And it crawls around the back of his head, and then he, and then he sits back down. And uh, everyone, you hear a scream, and then everyone starts to talk, and like the, the, the clamor starts to increase around the room. And uh, several of the guards like take Adelga Spryhart, and they help escort him out of the room. Uh, you know, they help, uh, they help him kind of daughter out of the room and, um, back here. And then they close that door. Oh. And, uh, and at that, uh, this masked figure stands up and, uh, and he, and he says, it seems we will not be able to have the meeting we had expected this evening, or perhaps the meeting we had hoped for in uh, several days. My brothers and sisters, the holy people of Damarong, blessed visitors, supplicants to our orders. The time that we have foretold draws nigh. For your protection, we will be taking residence here in Castle Brideheart and Avernspire. We must protect the symbolic head of our city. He isn't well. We've ordered the Holy Guard to bar the gates to the city. No one must come or leave. This is for your safety. Pray fervently, brothers and sisters. Cleanse your souls. The time draws nigh. And um, at that, uh, they also like form a line. And they, uh, they, they uh, are accompanied by a bunch of guards uh, that enter. And uh, their remaining Bridehards and Oracles are escorted by a large guard group along with uh, this knight out of the room as well. And then, um, all of a sudden, nobles start to try to hurry away and end conversations. And uh, you hear a lot of clamor. And the, 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 it becomes tinny and clamorous in here as there's like a lot of voices and it becomes loud. And uh, people start to talk to each other. I was thinking if we should talk to that uh, captain of the guard, I'm wondering if... Uh... He's aware of what's going on, or... Huh. I'll, I'll support you in whatever you wish to do. These two uh, noble people right here, they, uh, they, they say, Excuse us, and they haven't spoken to you all even, evening. They get up and they leave as well. Now, surely I'm not the only one who saw a roach come out of the man's mouth. There are good sources of protein. It's that weird. You want to go talk to the guard captain? Yeah, I'm going to go see if I can find him. All right, I'll just move you guys over there. I kind of, I'm going to try to resolve the Otwin thing by the end of the night too, so we can. All right, you make it back over to uh, the guard captain. He is trying to orchestrate an orderly. Um, exit and maintain security and uh, people are pushing and some of them are starting to um, to gather together. It can be hard to get through hallways sometimes. Almost like there's a fire and people are trying to make it out of a building, you know, but uh, a lot of the, the nobility are starting to, and they're, they're kind of coming with you, even though I'll leave the tokens over here. Uh, but some of them just act clueless, you know, like what's happening and um, what's going on? Uh, his dinner? Uh, will we not be having the rest of our dinner? We did not have dessert, you know, and like they're saying things like that and just clueless. Um, uh, you make it back to um, uh, Guard Captain uh, Ugar, and uh, he is fervently trying to organize people leaving uh, the dinner early, which was unplanned. You, Captain, I. You apologize to disturb you in your important work. And he's like, guard, uh, uh, please, uh, no, don't touch her. 
No, I, it's, it's fine. My lady, please. Everything will be fine. You, what? I'm sorry. Uh, my Lord Versheiner, how can I help you? I can't lean in, like, quietly. If a man who had managed to uncover a great horror in a great house were to come up to a captain and mention that he may have uncovered yet another in a greater house, would that man be ignored or helped? He leans forward and he says, My Lord Versiner, this is your duty, of course. I'm sure that anything that you find, you will report to Tower Jehersum. He kind of leans in a little bit more. Would he be heard? Um, you can make a, uh, uh, like a charm. Any fellowship check. Intimidation. That oh, yeah, you can do that. Although, remember, <laughs> although you don't know, you don't know what's going to happen when you do it. <gasps> do it. Yeah. Uh, I've got, I've got a good charm. Uh, well, I can actually, I could do both. But, <sighs> no. Uh, uh, let's see. Do it. Versus I got a trick anyways. Charm. Fellowship. It's oh my goodness, my willpower is actually stronger. All right. We're going for the interrogate. Okay. Um, actually, you know, I no, I'm just... I'm, oh, I was going to do a charm, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, you get the sense that this guy is in their pocket uh, very quickly. Uh, basically, he, he, uh, he looks at you and smiles, and you see that it's just vacant. He has no interest in trying to be heroic or do the right thing or blah, blah, blah. That is not his thing. Uh, he is, he's just trying to clock in at work today. Uh, right. that, if you've ever looked someone at, at the eyes in the DMV and saw that, that's, that's this, this, this dude, you ain't here trying to be a hero. So, uh, he says, I'm so sorry, my, my, my Lord Versiner. Uh, if, if there's some way that a humble guard captain can be of service, of course, please tell me, but I'm very busy, uh, as this place uh, has not gone as planned today. <laughs> I had to go, indeed, it has not. A rhetorical question. I wish you a good night. Of course. And then he turns around, he starts, he actually runs back here, there's some kind of ruckus, and he runs back into this room back here. Um, do you all want to try to do anything else as uh, the nobility is fleeing out of Castle Avernspire? The dinner has uh, fallen apart. We we all, this is the question: Are we allowed to leave? Did I misunderstand the the? Oh yes, of no, the they're they're making it so that everyone will leave. They're just uh, being disorderly, and some people are ah, okay, uh, okay. being uh, obstructive because they're clueless. Like what? I didn't. I don't have dessert. Uh, I thought I would get to speak with uh, Lord Adelgus. Uh, this is this is outrageous, you know. And the nobility are just being. Insolent and, and yeah, ridiculous. That's, that's definitely what I'm saying. All right. Are you, are you sure you don't want to murder someone right now? I feel like you won't. This is a really good time for murder. It's a, a very good time, but perhaps not the best time. All right. All right. Let's, let's vacate the premises. All right. We will do one more thing in the night of Damarung before we uh, end the session and call it a night. Uh, on your way, because it is on the way, um, you see uh, you see old o Otwin there um, at the uh, the northern gates that are heavily barricaded now, and uh, he is not doing well. It's clear that he's very sick. His skin necrotizing and black in more places than his hands. And he's slumped over, uh, and he, it's clear he doesn't have the book on him. And he looks up and he says, It's you. You're one of us now. Looks up to all of you. The great leech has sent us to you. Why? Do you know? A leech? I don't know. I'm not a leech. Except for these. Then he holds up his hand, the maggots fall out. And so he's decaying and falling apart. And he says, But we only need to hold on a little longer. You're one of us now. 
you're all the damned. Just like us, damned. But the gods, the gods are sending their angels. The angels are coming. I Where is it? it? We must keep it safe. I, the book? I the gave, book. I gave it to the angels. The angels have come to give justice to the city. The oracles lied. It wasn't us. It was them. They are the devils. Where do we find them? The angels, they'll come. They'll bring justice. As the prophecy foretold on the seventh day, there will be a battle. The angels will bring revenge. I kind of like grab them and shake them. When you met the angels, where were they? The angels. And he slumps over and like, you can actually see like the skin separate in places and and uh, as it's just uh, dead flesh. And, uh, and he says, if I could only serve the gods, I would be there. I would be there at the gates of Avernspire as they fail. I would be there with the angels at Avernspire. We are dead. Oh. He, he, he slumps to the ground dead. Um, right. I drop him down. I kind of he kind of looks at the sky and sighs, turns around and looks at the the others and says, "They always do that before you get the information." <laughs> that's why you need a doctor. And that's where we'll end tonight.